Hey guys, good evening. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, endure, guys, endure. Be uh, be on a steady pace running. We're running for, toward the finish line. And let's run together and have all the patience in the world to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He'll strengthen your heart. Amen. Wait, I say on the Lord. That's what we're doing here. We're learning the calendar. We still got one more adjustment to make. And uh, till we know what days of the Pentecost, you know, we got the 50 day count, the 50 day count, the 50 day count, and the six day count. And it'd be good to know and understand when to start and when to finish. Praise the Lord. And uh, we just praise God for you. We got home safely. Praise God for that. Amen. God's good to us. And uh, good to be home. It's always good to be home. Praise the Lord, guys. And make sure you're saved. Make sure you're saved, saved, saved. This, that's what this whole Bible study is about now. We believe that this Bible study is going to carry over after the rapture. And that's why Heather puts on here, before the rapture, here's how you get saved. And after the rapture, here's how you get saved. Before the rapture, you just believe the story of God and His salvation, that it's a free gift. It's an eternal free gift called eternal life. Because we are eternally dead. Because of our trespasses and sins against God, we have dead spirits. We need our spirits revived, plugged into God. And the only way that can happen is believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ on our part. That he came here and he took our place at the, uh, you know, the place of judgment. Where we were supposed to die, whether it was a firing squad or thrown into the fiery furnace. Instead of us being thrown into that furnace, Jesus was for us. Instead of us being shot, he was for us. Instead of us being crucified, truthfully and honestly and actually, it was he who was crucified for us. And he took our name down above him. We were the Barabbas example. He took that down and put, this is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Amen. And he did it for us. So to be saved on this side of the rapture, and the rapture is where God extracts all of us, his believers, both the dead and the living, over the last uh, 1,994 years since his ascension, since his resurrection, death, burial, and resurrection, and now we're called the church. We're the bride. And we become the bride. You become the bride if you'll believe. And you place your faith. There's no way I can get to heaven except only Jesus Christ and my belief in him. And I'm placing my faith right now, my eternal destiny, right now in his works, his death, burial, and resurrection. And that's how you get saved on this side of the rapture. On the other side of the rapture, you believe what we said, and you call out to his name. Oh, Lord Yeshua, Jesus. You name him by name. Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, I believe in you. I place my faith in you. And believe. Whosoever believeth in his heart and confess, confesseth with his mouth, he shall be saved. And then you walk it out until you either make it through the other side on the seven years, and most of you won't. Get killed, and you get killed for the sake of Jesus. Now, you might get killed in some of these judgments that God's going to bring. There's 21 judgments after we're raptured. You might get killed in those. You might get killed by Obama cutting your head off because you refuse. Obama's going to be the Antichrist because you refuse to get his mark. Okay? So we just want you saved on this side. If you're hearing my voice right now, why don't you believe now? Why don't you humble yourself and believe? And just place your trust, your faith, your ever-living existence in God's hands through your faith. Amen. And be saved. Amen. And then after you get saved, all you Christians listening to me who are saved, why don't you read your Bible? Why don't you read your Bible? You get to know Jesus. You understand him. Have him speak to your heart. And uh, just understand him. Know him. And read Genesis to Revelation. However the Lord leads you, we encourage you to listen to an audio Bible. And if you're, you know, audio Learning is your thing. I, I've met a very few in number who would could never do that. They have to read it. So whatever your forte is, do it. Read it and listen to it. Amen. Use all the senses that you can. And Heather's note here is you can use a audio Bible app to help you stay focused. You can go online and find a YouTube, whatever you like. Uh, and God's cool like that. He's He's made it available for us in our liking. And what pleasures you, what, what you prefer. It's there for choices. Just do it. Read that Bible. Read that Bible. 10 to 20 chapters every day. Learn the Bible. Learn to God. Hear Him. 
And then she places up here the link to the ebook. That's the Bible codes. We this is a Bible codes Bible study, and we go over the Bible codes, what God has taught us. And what is a Bible code? A Bible code is uh, God's Bible inside the Bible, but instead of it being uh, see the cat run in just plain letters right next to each other with a skip, see, skip, the, skip, cat, skip, run, skip. Instead of it being like that, the program has taken the entire Bible and made it one word from Genesis 1-1 to Malachi's last verse. And same thing in the New Testament from Matthew 1-1 to Revelation and 22:21, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And so it's all one word. And then that's called the coded text. The computer then, Sean will say, the Lord will put it on his heart to say, uh, the Antichrist or eternal life. Let's go with that one. Eternal life. How many times is eternal life encoded in the scriptures. How many times did God put it there at astronomical perfected skips? And then he'll put eternal life. Let's say he's doing an Old Testament code from Genesis to Malachi, eternal life. And however many times it is in there at perfect skips, the se sequences have to be perfect from start to finish. Otherwise, the computer will kick it out. It has to be exact number skips from each other inside the text. And so that's incredible. And then however many eternal lives come up, it could be, the first one could be at 17. He could find one somewhere where it says, every 17 skips says eternal life. And then the next one might be 253. And they have to be 253, 253, 253, all those skips spelling eternal life, finding each of those letters in the text from Genesis to Malachi. And that's how it's done. And it could be all the way up to half a million skips. It could skip all the way through and then start over because the code will wrap uh, Genesis and Malachi into a loop and it will keep searching them into the millions if you wanted to set it that high. And so God's got a bunch of times where he says eternal life in the Old Testament and Antichrist in the Old Testament. And you can find him in those perfect skips. And that's what we do here. Uh, Sean the Lord reveals those to him through his research, his study. God gives him the wisdom and the understanding how to find these codes, what he's looking for. And then you'll see all these horizontal lines going this way. Boom, boom, through these little gray shaded boxes that we're about to show you. And in these gray shaded boxes, all the lines going this way, you'll see that they're all, when you look real close, they're Hebrew letters or Aramaic letters if it's the New Testament. And every one of those is a plain text Bible verse. Then with this coded text that he finds, whether it's a 17 skip or a half a million skip, the computer will line them up all on top of themselves. And then we can see all the Bible verses running through them and the other terms that might be there that apply. And God has given Sean the wisdom to know what applies, what goes there, which words. He can find a bunch of words in codes, but they all don't belong in that code. And God's given him the understanding to know what belongs and what does it. And so that's what we do here. We, we share with you the Bible inside the Bible. Why? Because God always requires two witnesses out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. You know what that makes me think? There's a third witness, and that witness is you. This morning, we looked at the number 53, a faithful witness. Be a faithful witness. Be that 53. Will you? You know? Oh, that reminds me. Um, well, 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 we'll just talk about that later. But 53, we saw two 53s. 53 plus 53 is 106. 106 is the number that last year Sean learned through the Bible code. Now, he had seen it in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and God showed him how to apply it to God's calendar. Because what other people are looking at for the Dead Sea Scrolls, it is on the wrong calendar. So Sean learned that last year, and we, we added another 106 days to the 50-day count of Pentecost. Pentecost, we've always known it has 50-day count. That's what Pentecost means, 50, penta, 50. Like pentagram, okay, pentagon, five-sided plus a zero, 50. Jubilee is 50. And so we've always known that the count from the ascension of Jesus Christ, no, no, the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, count 50 days from that 
first day of the week, and Jesus Christ happened to raise on the first day of the week. So when he rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven on high. That count began, 50-day count. And then on the 50th day was the day of Pentecost, and that's when the Holy Spirit started the international church and spread it ablaze, 17 different dialects, speaking the word of God, knowing the truth of God, how to be saved. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and everybody who believes from that point on becomes filled with the Holy Spirit when they believe. Hallelujah. And that's how the church started. The church will end. It started on Pentecost, and we know that it will end on Pentecost. But now we've learned that there's three more segments to Pentecost past the first 50 days. Now there's a second 50-day uh, portion, and a third 50-day portion, and then a six-day portion. And the first 50 days is from the barley, from the day Jesus rose from the grave was the first day the sickle was put to the barley for the barley harvest. So they had to wait for that day for it to happen. It's called the Feast of First Fruits. It's in the Bible. We can find it. And uh, the, on the Feast of First Fruits, you put the sickle to the barley, and then we start counting 50 days of the omer, that the gathering of the barley, lifted high to the Lord, offering it to him. Okay, for 50 days, the omer is counted of barley. On the 50th day, you take the sickle to the wheat for the first time. And all those, those two days are the first fruits offering offered to the Lord. You take the first fruits of your barley down to the temple and they would offer it because that's how the priest got to eat. They didn't have a garden. They didn't have uh, crops. So it was God provided for them through the people, through the giving. And that was called the tithe, 10% of your field went down to the church so the Levites could eat, the priests, the high priests could eat, the people working at the temple. And so the people, God put it, uh, the privilege within our hearts, within our hands to go down and take care of the men of God who were providing the word of God and the teaching of God and uh, maintaining the light of the scripture, the light of God, the lamp of the word, amen? So that first 50 day count is from the day you sickle the barley to the day you sickle the wheat. And then that's the first 50-day count. We call that Pentecost. The second 50-day count begins on that 50th day, but it becomes number one for the next 50 days because it starts on the first day of the week. On the calendar that we have and what we did for the last seven years is we count on the Sunday because the command is to count on the first day after the Sabbath. Now, we know that we believe that that is the, uh, the day after the weekly Sabbath. The weekly Sabbath on everybody's calendar, the Gregorian calendar, and the Jewish calendar is Saturday, beginning Friday night, Saturday to Saturday night. And so Saturday they consider is the Sabbath, and Sunday they consider is the first day of the week. So we can, we've considered that. That's on our calendar, but it's wrong. And that's about to be adjusted. And we want you to understand those adjustments when they happen. We all want to be counted on the same calendar, the proper calendar, the same one that God is using in heaven on his feast days. So he won't be angry and disgusted with your feast days. He says, I hate your feast days. I hate your new moons. I hate your celebrations because they're all on the wrong calendar and they're all done in the wrong spirit, not unto the glory of God the Father and him righteous, lifting Jesus high above all names. Because his name, the Father has already lifted him high above all names. And you and I, when we agree with the Lord, when we're in the spirit of belief, we elevate. When we're in the spirit of discipleship, we'll elevate Jesus. There's a lot of people who are saved who don't elevate Jesus high and, and live their lives for him. But we don't want you to be part of that. We want you to be a good disciple. We want you, after you're saved, after you've believed, after your spirit has been made alive, quickened, you're now attached to the Lord. You now have reconciliation. You can now get in his face, in his presence, and just come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace in your time of need. We want that for you. We want you to walk. We want you to enter. We want you to be saved. But a lot of folks who are saved don't live Jesus high, and we encourage you to do that. We want you to do that. We disciple you to do that. Barley and the 50 days. You got it. Amen. Yeah, pr pr pray that Johnny, Johnny Bull have the, have the message, and tonight's barley in 50 days. Right on, right on. And so this is our education. It's a 50-day count, and something happens at the end of each of those 50 days, and which is also the first day for the next segment. 
Okay? So the first segment of 50, called Pentecost, is from the barley, the sickle being taken to the barley, to the wheat. Boom. And then on that day, counts uh, begins for another 50-day count from the wheat harvest, and you count 50 days, to the grape harvest. And the purpose of the grapes is to make wine. It's called the, the uh, Festival of New Wine or the Feast of New Wine. And that's that 50-day count from wheat to the grapes. Then on that day begins day number one from the grapes to the olives, which is the Feast of Oil. Okay? So let's summarize. The first 50 days is barley to wheat. The second 50 days, which is on the 50th day, begins number one for the wheat to the grapes. The third phase is from the grapes to the olives. That's 150 days of counting. And then there's six days, which does not begin on that first day of the week like the others do. They all begin on, for the sake of our calendar, well, I'll say Sunday. They all begin on Sunday. The first count begins on Sunday, the 50. And then the next one, it's what you're looking at, really, on the calendar. In, in practicality, you're looking at seven weeks, every seven Sundays. So um, this year, if we were to start on Sunday, we've got June 9th, because you count on that first day of the week after the resurrection. This year, the re resurrection is June 8th. Get your tablets out and write some notes here, okay? Write what the dates are this year. Because what's going to happen is, what I'm giving you is the Sunday dates. But if it happens to be on Monday, we'll just add another day to the dates that I've given you. If it's on Tuesday, we'll add two days to each of the dates I've given you. Wednesday, we'll, we'll add three days, and so we'll know what day it is. So you'll have a good base right here, counting the first day of the week. Look at old Garris. God bless you, family. God bless you too, buddy. Love you, man. Love you, the boys, your mama, everybody. Praise God, praying for you. Often as we think of you, we pray for you, bro. God bless. And all y'all too. We love you. So get your get your pen and paper out and write these dates down. And this is uh at the first day of the week, what we call Sunday. If the count starts, it'll be June 9th, will be the first day of the barley is sickled. Okay? The resurrection, the Sunday after the resurrection day. And it'll take you to July 28th which is the wheat. So June 9th to July 28th is wheat. Then beginning July 28th, you'll count the 50 days. It'll take you to September 15th, which is the wine. So uh, 7, yeah, J July 28th. 7 28 to 9 15 is wine. Then you got 9 15 to 11-3, November 3rd, is oil. Let's go through that again. June 9 to July 28, wheat. June 28 to September 15, wine. September 15 to November 3rd, oil. And then your six days of wood began the following day on what we position as Monday. Right now we call it Monday of November 4th to November 9th. And it ends on what we call Saturday. And that, all that's going to be changed. Like I said, it'll still be the se seventh day position, but it's not the date on our calendar. Okay? It's not going to be Sunday, and it's not going to be Saturday. It'll be something different. So I just wanted to get those dates to you. And as we know the, the answer, we'll uh, just adjust those a day or a two days or three days or whatever it is. Okay? So that's how far I was going to go November 9th. What's really interesting in this is I have just learned that the uh, you, you got to look at the world stage. You got to look at who's who's what's going on in the big world stage, especially when money's involved and the spotlight is involved. Okay, been looking at that Tyson fight, and it was going to happen on June twentieth, right there during our count. Our count starts if it on this calendar the ninth, tenth, eleventh, something like that. But the fight would have happened during our count. Well, he got an ulcer attack on an airplane. And Mike Tyson, and it has postponed, delayed the fight to the end of the year. Well, I look over here at my calendar, and I already know that November 9th, as it stands, as we got it right now in our skeleton calendar, is the end of the year. And so they're, they're, everything is to point things to put something. Why is that so important? Because he's called Iron Mike Tyson. He's also called The Beast 
And that guy he's fighting, I, I can't, this thing just popped into my mind. I can't remember his opponent, but he, his um, nickname is, goes right along with a revelation thing. Okay, it's an overlay of what's going down. So that kind of sparked my eyeballs. Okay, so we're, we're staying abreast of all these things. We want to know the calendar. Guys, guys, that's why we have this Bible study is so you'll know what time it is. Okay, the rapture is coming up and we'll begin counting sometime around June 9th or thereafter. Okay, and uh, so I just want to get that word out there to you. Why don't we look at some Bible codes? Praise the Lord. God's word in his dialect. Jesus Christ is coming, and don't let the devil hinder that in your heart, in your, your joy zone, okay? You look up and rejoice into the face of God for his wonderful, wonderful blessing to us, for his goodness to, to mankind. Same 153-day count, sure enough, sure enough, 153-day count, because uh, three of the days of the 106 overlap each other. That's a great question. It's 106 days total that we count 50, 50, 50, and 6. But three of those days overlap each other. It gives us an abs a calendar date that counts of 153. Exact. Good question, dude. And Heather says, please like and share these nightly Bible studies. Guys, when I do these codes right now, the ones we're doing up until, you know, we get close to, I think, 2022 or something. Um, we're in the 2021s. And they're not shareable. So I, I try to make them shareable in every evening after we preach them so you can get them out there. These codes have not been out there in public, in the public public. And so it's your opportunity to share these things so the word can get out there. Okay, You never know which Bible code somebody is going to see. We'll click with them and get them back to clicking on the, the ebook link. Okay, We want them knowing these Bible codes. We want them knowing Jesus. Okay, we want them knowing the plain text. Read that 10 to 20 chapters every day, and we want you to know that there is a second witness inside the plain text, and you are that third witness. Get it out there. Get it out there. God loves two or three witnesses, and the plain text is the main text. And then this coded text, bam, is inside the main text, and that's the second witness, and you're the third witness. Share, 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 share it out there. Get the word out there. Be that gal. Be that guy. And, and be a minister for the Lord Jesus Christ to the end, till we get to the end, man. Okay? Uh, this one here we're going to look at is November 5th, 2021. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Okay, and that's when they tried to blow up Parliament and all that stuff, and the plan was stopped. This one is, who is against Jehovah and dies? Well, everybody. If you're against Jehovah and you never place your faith in Jehovah, Jesus Christ is Jehovah, the great I am. If you never place your faith in him and believe that Jehovah God himself came here to die for you, and you won't place your faith in that, he's coming to kill you. And it'll be an eternal death where you die every nanosecond for eternity. Constant death over and over. Death, 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 death. When Jesus Christ came to Death, where's your sting? Grave, where's your victory? Well, it was swallowed up in Jesus. And for those who place their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, he takes our death and our sting from us, and we have everlasting life. And this proposal is for all mankind, all humans. Jesus died for all human beings. Please be part of this. Please be the bride of Christ and believe. And the question is here, so who's against Jehovah and dies? And she has that link up here. We encourage you to click on that link. And after this link, you, you can click to the left side of that gray shaded box and it will advance you. Or Heather, she puts up every link for every one of these. Okay? Why don't we begin? You guys ready for a Pentecost rapture? I am. I am. Who is against Jehovah? And see, the whole ocean floor is heating up right now, guys. The magma all over the world. The earth is heating up. You know, they always press this... Um, what did they call it before climate change? Global warming. Global warming. Because they knew that when this Nibiru system comes in, it reacts to Earth and, act, uh, and Earth starts acting up and getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And the volcanoes will start spewing in everything that the Bible says to be looking for. Birth pains and during the situation once the baby comes. 
So be, be looking, be ready, be knowing the truth. It is not global warming. It is not climate change based on cow farts and you exhaling air. That's all lies, lies, lies. The truth is they don't want you to know about Nibiru and its interaction with Earth and heating up the core of the Earth. And so the ocean waters are going to be getting more. Oh, it's El Nino. It's El Nina. They got these names for the lie. And you, you understand, you come to know what's going on. This is God's judgment. The earth is heating up because of Nibiru coming in and its reaction. That's why the sun is so active right now, spitting out all these um, gamma radiation particles at us, man. And be ready for all that and just know what's going on and stay in prayer. Say, Lord, help us, guide us. And you can pray specifically when you're praying truth. Hell is surfacing on earth. That's what's happening. God's trying to warn people. Do you want this forever? You don't want this forever. And men will rebel. They'll grit their teeth, curse God out, the Bible says, and keep on saying, give me hell and worshiping their idols. So, so sad. All right. So here's this Bible code from November 5th, 2021. Sean, this is his commentary. He says, so who's against Jehovah? Who's against yod heh vav and dies? Daniel 7.11, and then Daniel 8.25, 2 Thessalonians 2.8, and Revelation 19.15 tells us all about it. He continues, Gog of Ezekiel 38 and 39 and the Antichrist are one and the same person. Why did we, we go over these? Because the world doesn't get it yet. The church doesn't get it yet. The pastors don't get this yet. The watchmen on the wall don't understand this. Those professionals, prophecy in the news, and everybody who does this for a living, we got it all wrong, man. And they don't know that Gog and Armageddon's the same thing, the same time frame. And so we go over every night because we're doing them in order. We've been doing them from 2016 when Sean first published them on Facebook. All the way through, we've come all the way to 2021, November of. We're about to cross over into December and then into January of 22. That's how far we've come. And we'll see Obama, God codes, then we'll see hell codes, then heaven codes, then salvation codes, and the Bible code codes. And so as they come in order, we go over them, and it's vital because people have got to know that Gog is Barack Obama and the Gog War is the same as Armageddon at the end of the tribulation. So Sean continues. He says, and the Antichrist, they're one. Gog and the Antichrist are the same person. Ezekiel 38, 17 proves this fact beyond doubt because Scripture interprets Scripture. Let's open this up. Daniel eleven thirty five to 45. And uh, Isaiah 14, 25 to 26 Ezekiel 38, 17. That's what we're going to read right now is Ezekiel 38, 17. Thus says the Lord God, Art thou he of whom has spoken of old by the time of his servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? And so it's talking about God. I got to open up my font size here. There we go. There we go. All right. And also... uh. The Lord God is speaking. This is his commentary on what we we're reading here. The Lord God is speaking directly to Gog of Magog, he of whom I have spoken in times past, kind of thing, through the prophets. It is evident in searching through all the other books and the prophets of Israel that the Antichrist is referred to many times by many names, but here in Ezekiel is the only time we see him being called Gog. And we've seen this in a commentary in the past. And so that was, what, two years ago? You know, and, and in our time frame, you know, three weeks ago kind of a thing. And so if it sounds familiar, good. Learn it, get it in your heart and share it with other people because we're here at the time of the end, guys. The counting is about to start. This is the true passion week of Jesus Christ. His death on the cross happens on God's calendar, not this fake stuff that's going on, all these lies, okay? God, God gave us his calendar in the Bible, and it's vital that we follow his calendar at his right timing, okay? And this is the true Passion Week. And he dies on the cross in three days from now. This is the 11th day of the first month, okay, on God's calendar. Jesus was crucified on the 14th day of the first month. 
he rose from the dead on the 17th day of the first month. Okay, and then we begin counting those 50 days to Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And so we got to get it all right, and we're, we're headed that way right now. And so now we're looking at a Bible code that's God's Bible inside the Bible that he hid for those who really care, who love to dig, who love to know that there's more to it, and God loves us. That's why he gave us this Bible code at the, the end of days so we'd have the whole story right and we won't believe all the lies around us. You guys heard that uh, uh, aircraft carrier got hit, right, the Eisenhower, by the Hooties. They shot it twice, and nobody's talking about it. Nobody's out, and a destroyer next to it. They don't know if the destroyer was sunk or what. They haven't heard from the destroyer. We have aerial, uh, aerial satellites of the Eisenhower, but they don't know where that destroyer is. And it has moved 400 kilometers a day in the last two days. So it is 800 kilometers from its initial point where it got hit. It got hit once and then got hit again. We don't know the, of the, uh, the extent of the damage, but the story's out there. We're at the end of this thing, guys. All the, all the warfare, all the battlements are in line. They're at their borders. They're bringing in more warfare for World War III to begin. And that's what this whole end time scenario is all about, guys. Open your eyes, please. Have a heart for truth. People don't care about God. And you got to care about God because he cares about you. And that's why he gave us his Bible. He gave us his heart. And he gave us these Bible codes. And he wants you to know that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. We have this given to us over 150 times, okay, through Scripture. And so that's what we're looking at now. So Gog and the Antichrist have to be the same person because of the description. And here, let's look at this code. This is God's word in his dialect. And this particular code happens to be at a perfect skip of 73,333. 73,333. And so it's a whole Old Testament the whole Old Testament has been turned into one word in the computer program. And then we're bringing up uh, fire to Obama, something like that. And then the computer looks for all the perfect skips for fire to Obama. And then boom, boom, boom. This happened to be 73333. And the term he's looked up here is, who is against Jehovah and dies? Well, the answer generally is everybody. But for this particular Bible code, it's going to be... Barack Obama. He is against God at the end, and he's come to take over Israel. And that's when Jesus shows up in Ezekiel 38 uh, and 39 and destroys him, kills Barack Obama and Pope Francis, and the devil throws them all into the grave. Okay, He, he kills them, stomps their corpses, and has them buried in pauper's graves along with the entire army there. And then Jesus continues on his killing spree to clean up the world, to get all the wicked removed from this world. Wouldn't, won't that be a great day? And you and I will have come back with him. We will have been in heaven for seven years while this terrible stuff's going on on earth. The very last day called the day of the Lord is when Jesus comes back. And Jude, Jude was the half brother of Jesus. It's this, uh, next to the last book in the New Testament. And it's just one little chapter, but it's powerful. And Jude says he's going to be coming back with ten thousands of his saints. That's us. We come back with him. And he does all the work. We're called the armies of God, but we're the bride of Christ. And he does the work and we watch him do it. And he just does it with his mouth. He says, be destroyed. When he says, be destroyed in the Aramaic language, Barack Obama and the Pope and everybody there dies immediately. Then Jesus gets off his horse and stomps their corpses dances on them based on Genesis 3.15. And then he says, Amen. And then he heads on. And what happens when he says destroy, boom, everybody there, their blood is just, you know, comes flying out of their bodies. And the Bible tells us there is a river of blood up to the horse's bridle for 180 to 200 miles. This is big. And then that's, he goes to cleansing the rest of the world and gets everything set up for his millennial kingdom, and he goes, saves the one-third of the Jews in hiding. And they're so excited to see him. He had placed them in hiding for three and a half years, and they're so excited to see him. Just before he does that, he comes back to earth, and the Bible code asks us right here in those perfect skips, 73,333 from the first letter to the next letter, 73,333 to the third letter, 73,333 to the fourth, and all the way through. And every one of these, when you look at these tables, 
you'll see perfect skips, perfect symmetrical balance, man, because God is perfect. And he wants us to know these things right now while the whole world's got it wrong. He wants you to know about your salvation. Your salvation's a free gift. You don't have to go through church works, catechism, burning candles, rituals, standing up, get down. You know, no spiritual calisthenics involved. Just believe. Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ that he paid your price through his death, burial, and resurrection, and you place your faith in that. And that'll get a person saved, and that'll get them saved forever. Because Jesus wants you saved. But the translation is this. God's word in his dialect. Here we go. By Code by Sean Mitchell. And only his Bible codes are authentic and approved by God in the book form. These are the seven thunders in Revelation that John could not open. Okay? And here we have them opened here at another time. Because God told John that. He says, that's not for you. That's to remain sealed until the end of days. And so here we are the end of days. And for the last 10 years, God has been revealing these codes to us. And this is the one from November 5th, 2021. Who is against Jehovah and dies? And he revealed his target, Barack Obama, fire to Obama, the word, that's Jesus, capital W, he's the word made flesh. We were told in the beginning was the word, Jesus, and the word was made flesh. He became flesh to die for us in our place. And the word appeared on high. Behold, he will smite. He will kill with words. Destroy. Be destroyed. That's what he's going to say. The breath of the lamb. The Lord cast down great stones. And that's what we see. The great stones that are coming down are, you'll see those in the Ezekiel 38 and 39 passage. And what they are, are the bold judgments of Revelation. The last seven judgments are these stones coming down. And it's at the same time Jesus is coming down and he's going to pulverize everything. And the Bible says there has never been a day greater in terribleness. No, no worse day than this one. This will be the one worst day of worst days. It's going to be pathetic and for, for the living. Okay. They're going to be scared to death. And this is after seven years of this going on. And this is the worst day. And so when Jesus comes back, he's going to kill with his voice. And he's got all these hailstones of fire coming down from this planetary system. That's uh, all these stones, all these little asteroids and everything are in its debris tail. And that's God's judgment system called Nibiru. And all these things are being released as he's coming down with his word to destroy. The Lord cast down the great stones from heaven upon them, upon all the wicked people on earth. The, the last remaining. I mean, so many have died in these seven years, but this is the last day when Jesus personally comes back with us, who's been ah, in heaven for seven years. We have our glorified bodies. We've been at the marriage supper of the Lamb. All the children have come together with us. Everybody who's been saved, born again from above, and all the children, those in God's eyes in whom he sees them as innocent. We don't know what age that is, but we're all going to come back with the Lord when we see this. We're going to be right by him when all this is happening. Vengeance with a slaughter by the hand of Yeshua. Boom. Let's look at another one. We're going to click to the left, and Heather will have that link up here. This is another one proving that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. And people say, you just don't know who the Antichrist is. And we have 150 codes, God telling us exactly who he is at perfected skips. You cannot deny this, guys. You cannot deny the mathematics here. You cannot de deny God's perfection and what he's done. It's mind-blowing when you'll stop and think about it. Instead of just saying, no, that's impossible. Let me click the channel here. I'm going to encourage you not to click the channel. If you want to know God's heart and you want to be right with him at the time of his calling us up at the rapture, know these Bible codes. Download that link. Become familiar with all 521 of these things. And all you, gotta, you don't have to read all the Bible verses. Just read the... Translation, where God has given us his latter-day translation with greater details. Instead of the word Antichrist and Gog in the plain text, you're going to see Barack Obama, Pope Francis. You're going to see names. He's naming names. He's naming positions. He's naming locations. He's naming dates. And we're about to be caught up in that rapture. And this seven-year tribulation will be on like Donkey Kong. All you got to do is look at the armies around the world and what's going on. And the evil right here with this whole... Biden administration and everything else, letting everything happen. Guys, we've had millions upon millions since um, Clinton, Bill Clinton's days coming through the border. 2015, we had Jade Helm, and that was a military operational front, 
and they used Walmarts. Remember when they had to have those plumbing repairs in those five Walmarts and they were at perfect points in setting up a front for military action? They have the underground railroads and they were bringing them all in, man. That's when it started again. That, that was while Obama was king. And then it just continued on, man. Continued on, continued on. And uh, here we are still. And there are millions of anti-American soldiers, United Nations soldiers here in deep underground military bases. Dumbs, look it up. D-U-M-B-S. And the dark state, the black state, the swamp, what's they're referred to, is hiding them all there. And the guys who say they hate the swamp are part of the swamp. The fox is in charge of the hen house, folks, and you are the target. They all want you, you and me, all of us, dead. Jesus wants you saved, and he wants you delivered. Believe today, okay? The little horn, we see that in the book of Daniel. He's identified as President Obama in God's encoded word. And we know that the little horn in the plain text, a lot of these people who won't believe that it's Barack Obama or don't know that it's Barack Obama, most people are saying, no, it's Russian, it's Putin. The Bible says, no, it's not Putin. He's a decoy. Trump is a decoy. They're all decoys. If they're on the world stage, guys, the whole stage is filled with actors, and they are lying and acting and doing, fulfilling a script that opposes God. But to get to believe the masses to believe it, because if you believe a lie, you oppose the truth. And Jesus said, I am the truth, and you better believe the truth. And that's why we have these Bible codes, and that's why we go over them every night. So you'll know the truth. And you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. Whoever the Spirit sets free is free indeed. We want you free. And God has encoded that President Obama is the Antichrist, the little horn. And everybody who knows the plain text knows that the little horn in the book of Daniel is represented the Antichrist here at the end of days. Now we have a name and a face for him. Okay, And he stays hidden out, and he'll rise up and be all cool. He became a billionaire through owning Netflix. Net is what you catch your prey in. And here the, the passage says this in Daniel 7, verses 8 and 11. I consider the horns, okay, that's the, the a, a horn is a power nation, a powerful man. It, a horn represents power. I mean, on animals, boom, they crush each other's heads with the power of their horns, right? So he says, and God likens them to men in power, uh, countries in power. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. Well, that means he's not known right now. He, he, he's, he's done give up his presidency, and he's been gone for a while, and no, he hadn't. He's got his hand shoved straight up Biden, and they're doing their thing, okay? A little puppet master. There came up among them a little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, former kingdoms, and now... We're here at the latter days of a continuing kingdom. And people that don't know history, don't know Bible history, really have difficulty understanding what this is. And so that's what we're sharing with you. Uh, it's history in the past, and now we're going to have the present day deal. And Barack Obama is this little horn that pops up, and he takes out three horns. Three, three kingdoms, three power people who oppose him. He rises up. Ten kings, ten nations give their give their power over to him, and then three are like, nah, I didn't sign up for this, and then he snuffs them, okay? They were plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this uh, horn, his eyes were like the eyes of man, the mouth speaking great things. And then verse 11, I beheld, and because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, his big mouth is going to be blasphemous against God, he's homosexual, and he hates God in every other facet. Okay, he hates everything the Bible says already. And all you got to do is follow him. Get your eyes off of television and your entertainment and just follow what this guy says and his people. The United Nations, they hate God, Jesus Christ with a passion. And they have great words that swell up. And he says, I beheld, this is Daniel talking. I, I was looking in this vision in the dream. Even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. That's when Jesus Christ comes back on that very last day and kills him. Jesus Christ will personally kill the Antichrist, Gog, and the Pope. 
And then uh, Revelation 13, when you read Revelation 13, it's about the two bad guys, the beast and the under beast, the first beast and the second beast, Barack Obama and the Pope. That's what Revelation 13 is about. Okay. And this is verse five. And there was given a, unto him a mouth, Obama, speaking great things and blasphemous. The power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months, three and a half years, the last three and a half years of the seven year tribulation when Satan enters his body. All right, let's, let's look at this Bible code. The Bible inside the Bible at mathematical, incredible skips, all the terms. And if it's going this way, it's just the plain text, Daniel, Ezekiel, whatever, okay? And Sean will mark those for us. The translation is this, God's word in his dialect. President Obama is the horn and he will rise the beast into the holy place. And we know that's, that's what the Jews are looking for. When he enters into the temple and he's going to break the covenant, oh, I'm here for peace, peace, peace. And then he had been lying the whole time. And finally, at the end of three and a half years, he breaks that covenant with everybody and says, I lied to you. I'm coming after you, Israel, and everybody better get my mark of the beast or I'm going to kill you. You won't be able to buy, sell, or trade without my genetic marker. It's going to turn people from human to non-human. And when you're non-human, you can't be saved. And that's why the Bible says everybody who gets this mark of the beast will not be saved. They're going to go to hell. They are hell bound. And so he's going to continue 40 and two months after the devil enters him. And the Jews are looking for him to go into that temple and set up an image of himself and declare himself to be God. We're shutting down that temple over there. No more animal sacrifices. I'm God. And you're going to worship me or you're going to die. And then everybody's going to go on the run and be flying. So the people who had believed in the first three and a half years, they're looking for that moment. That's their trigger moment when they see Barack Obama walk into the temple and set up that beast image of himself and declare himself to be God. They are commanded to take off running. Don't go back to your house. Don't gather nothing. You run. And then God will miraculously save them and place them in hiding for the next three and a half years when he's in super, super incredible devilish dragon beast mode, killing everything in sight. And here's his notes. In biblical Hebrew, the word, and he's, he's got it spelled out in Hebrew, uh, nasi, looks like nasi, or nasi is how he's got it pronounced, means prince, chief, ruler, and is also the modern Hebrew word for president. And that's why he's got here that President Obama is the horn. Praise God. God tells us straight up. All right, let's look at another one. This is the little horn is identified. Same story, just a different code. This is from November 16th, 2021. It says the little horn of Daniel 7, 8 is identified as Barack Obama. Believe today. Believe us today, man. I had a, somebody not believe me this weekend who loves the Bible, who loves the plain text, but wouldn't believe me. And I encourage you to look at this and understand God. He's wanting you to know here at the end of days before we're raptured, because we're going to stand before him as the judge when he hands out all the rewards for everything we did for him and how we lived for him, we're not the judgment seat of Christ is not determines whether you go to heaven or hell. Only people who's going to heaven, the bride of Christ, will be at this, and it's a time of rewards, just like the Olympics. Those people on those three stands aren't just so scared to death and bummed that they won and came in first, second, and third, gold, silver, and bronze. They love it. They're excited. Okay. And so that's what this is called the Bema Seat. God's going to reward us for everything we did for him on this planet for him, not for ourselves, not for the temporary. Okay? Sean goes on. He talks about a guy in between Malachi and Matthew. There was a 400-year period between what we call the Old Testament and the New Testament. Right here about 168 was a guy, a Greek, Antiochus Epiphanes, who was ruling Jerusalem. He was a pig. He was a devil. And he was a forerunner. He was an example of what Barack Obama is going to do. Okay? He's a historical figure, not a biblical one. Something, very, but, but you'll know about him because that's where Hanukkah come from. Hanukkah come from these guys when the Maccabean Jews, that was their last name, Judas Maccabees, when they revolted against him. And they took him out and they got the temple back and they consecrated it and cleansed it. And that's where Hanukkah, the eight days of Hanukkah came from during this time. Something very important to note here is that both terms, Barack and Obama, share letters in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 30. And he shall return. And he shall return, yeah, Barack Obama. Let no man deceive you by any means, man. And 
2 Thessalonians 2, 3 and 4. We read this verse often. I encourage you to read it again. But it says, uh, the man of sin is going to be revealed. God's going to reveal him in the tribulation to the people who wouldn't believe in this side and weren't saved. But he's revealed it to us in this encoded text so we would know. God wants us to know. And only those who want to know, who seek truth, who desire truth, who de desire it above everything else, he'll reveal the truth to you. Amen? The hidden secrets. He doesn't hide this Bible code from us. He hides it for us to find. Only And only the people who desire the truth. And I was asked that question today. Why are there so few of us who believe this? Because very few people love the truth. And very few people are willing to flush the lies. The devil is the prince of the power of the airwaves. And people love, they, they love their entertainment. They love music. They love TV. They like being, oh, Netflix me, Netflix me, baby. And they watch all this other stuff and negate the truth. They negate the important. Understanding that this life is temporary and it's a test for the eternal. Pass the test. Live heavenly. Be a good example. Be a good ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. But it says he's, he's not going to be revealed till mid-trib to the earth dwellers, the people who are in the trib, but he's revealed to us now. And we know Barack Obama is the Antichrist. And here's the code. God's word in his dialect at a skip of, dude, check out the skip. Negative 339-600. Every 300... Uh, 339,600 is the next letter on perfect sequential skips. And it spells out, the little horn is identified. You better believe now. You better believe this is God. He authored these things. And then he's got these other terms. Let's read what they say. The little horn is identified. Barack Obama into the house. The Lord, he, he went into the house of the Lord to deceive for the lie. That's when he goes in the house and sets up an image of himself and says, y'all got to worship this image. Get the number of the beast, 666. Get the mark. Bear my name. And everybody who gets the mark of the beast is going to know that they're paying homage, allegiance to Satan, Lucifer, and Barack Obama. It's not going to be an accidental, oh, whoops thing. They're going to know it in three different phases. Click here, click here, click here, advance, submit. They're going to go through three phases and knowing, verifying that they know, they are acknowledging when they bend their knee, they're declaring that Satan and Barack Obama are God. And then they get that mark of the beast and they can't be saved because it becomes, it, it alters their genetics. And they go from being human being to being beast. And they can't be saved. The Bible tells us that. Daniel 11.30, and he shall return. That's where we see Barack Obama. And he shall return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant, the promise that he made. We made a treaty here at the United Nations, and for three and a half years, it appears that he's keeping it. And at the end of three and a half years, he returns from battle, from something, from the dead, because he, he gets shot and raises from the dead, and Satan enters him. And he returns back into that body of his with Satan. He breaks that covenant. Let's look at one more, man. One more. Armageddon. A very great slaughter. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Kim says, do you think when Satan enters B.I., he'll still resemble himself? Yeah. He'll have, a, he'll have an eye missing. He will have his eye blown out. He's going to get shot. He's going to get shot, assassinated, and he'll lose the right side, the power of his right side. He'll be shriveled up. He'll look differently that way. He'll have an eye missing, and it might be replaced with a bionic eye. Like the million-dollar man when we was kiddos. Something like that. And all, guys, that's another setup. We talked about this last night. The six million dollar man was a setup for Antichrist. He's going to ha have an eye blown out and he's going to have to have, you know, he's going to be different, but he'll still be recognizable as Barack Obama because he's going to match that image of the beast. Everybody's going to see. It's sad. Jesus is coming soon and the so called Christians don't uh, want to get their houses in order. It's sad. But we encourage you to. That's why we're here every night. Get your house in order. Know these Bible codes. Believe them and live them. Okay? But first of all, don't you can't do that unless you're saved. You must be born again. And you get saved by believing. Not any church religious action you can do. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. All right. Let's look at this last one here. This is November 19, 2021. The Battle of Gog and Magog. That's that battle that people will not believe is the same, same as Armageddon. 
Most people, when they're describing the battle of Gog and Magog, they think it's at the beginning of the seven-year tribulation. And God tells us in his Bible code, they're the same war. They're the same battle. Gog is the Antichrist. And so he sold us over and over. Thank you, says Kim. Bob as the Borg. Resistance is futile. Lies, lies, lies. Yeah, Bob is Barack Obama. And that's one of his nicknames. That's one of his code names. You'll see him on the Illum Illuminati playing card deck. Bob. Okay, and they knew way back in 1997 when they made that deck that Barack Obama, a guy by the name of Barack Obama. Now, that's not his birth name, guys. His birth, he, his, he's Barry Satoro. Okay, but his birth name was Steve Dunham. Steve Dunham was his birth name with his mother. Then he was adopted by Satoro, uh, an Indonesian, and he became Barry Satoro. And then he changed his name to Barack Obama, which means we saw Satan fall from, from the heights. Okay, the lightning from the heights. That's what Barack Obama means. And so that's, it's a spiritual name, but it's always been in the Bible codes. And it always mentions him, so he took on that name. God knew he would take on that name. It's a very um, Muslim thing. Uh, Mohammed's horse's name was Barak, with a Q at the end. Barak. You know, Q? Q? You guys know that that Q character is a role played, and it's from the brainchild of the Antichrist. Barack Obama, he is Q. Amen? All right. Was he bred? It sure seems so. It seems like they chose the DNA, just like Hitler had specialized, and made this guy in a lab. And we're, we have Bible codes saying God was angry at his birth. Matter of fact, it was a couple days ago when he was celebrating his um, 44 by 60. He was the 44th president, and it was his 60th birthday, and he was giving out all those masks. God said, I hate his birth. He was talking about uh, the Lion King and how he's the Lion King, and he's Simba, and he really is. Simba is the example of the Antichrist. And he's talking about that, and God said, I hate his birth. I can't stand his birth. So it might be a chimera-type thing, okay? Uh, anyway, human genetics. He could have taken uh, some genetics from Nimrod, Gilgamesh, taken some from Hisler, and other people down through the ages. Nero, wherever, wherever they can find the body and corpse and extract the DNA, he might have been built like that. And we know Nimrod was a black man, came from the lineage of Cush. And we have Bible codes saying that. Okay? And so he is Nimrod. He is Nimrod. Now, that might just be a genetic thing through the natural genetic line, and they have tracked him and traced him. And they invent and they have um, planned ritualized copulation so the high priest could copulate this witch or this woman to have the seed mingled among dynasty bloodlines, okay? That's how they roll in the world. And Obama and the United Nations, all of them are part of this. So I don't know exactly how it happened, but something happened. We know that he's Nimrod. We know that he's of Ham and Cush, okay? And in rebellion to God, that whole lineage from Nimrod down, Nimrod became a beast that couldn't be saved. And in his beasthood, he became a giant. He started growing like a giant, just like David's nemesis, Goliath. Goliath had six fingers and six toes on each hand and foot. That's a sign of a Nephilim. And two rows of teeth is what is taught. And when they find these skulls, these giant skulls, they'll have two rows of teeth and six digits on each appendage. And so we continue Sean's commentary, and he says, And the Battle of Armageddon are the same, both the Gog Magog and the Battle of Armageddon. We have two witnesses tonight on the same subject. Please believe. It is only at the second coming of Jesus after the battle of Armageddon that Ezekiel can possibly be fulfilled at the end. Okay? It's at the end, not the beginning. And these guys who say it's at the beginning, you need to direct them to the Bible code, to God. All right. Let's see what this code says. Translation. This is God's word in his dialect given to us by Sean Mitchell. The skip is 72224. 72,224. Negative. So that means it starts from the bottom and goes upward. All those red red dots is what, what says Armageddon. Okay? At that negative skip of 72,224. And you'll see that all the straight lines going up like this, boom, 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 all those phrases, 
terms, they're all at the same skip. Everything that is pure vertical are at the exact same skip as the main term. Okay, so I see one, two, three, four, if I'm not missing any, one, two, three, four, five, Gog, can't miss him. Yeah, and all you gotta do is when you look at that table below, at the report, just see how many of those negative 72 to 24s, and you'll see some positive ones. So some of those lines are going from the bottom up, and some are going from the top down, but they're all the same skip, just one's positive, one's negative, all right? And uh, so this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, that are all the exact same straight up and down, okay? Matching the word Armageddon at that same exact skip. Now, guys, this is God. God, Jesus Christ, Jehovah did this. This is his work. Ascribe him glory and praise for his wonderful, awesome work. Six exact skips in six different phrases, different locations on this table. That's God doing that. Now let's hear what he says. And I say says in the present tense because the Bible is ever living. It's not what he said, it's what he's saying. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen? Armageddon is very great slaughter. This is God talking. Is end time lingo, perfected mathematics. And he gave it for us, and it, you couldn't get this unless there was a computer. So how many of us know to count 72,000 letters and know where to skip next? We don't, but you can put this into the computer and say, how many times is Armageddon in there? And it'll tell you every perfect skip, whether it's at a single line skip, and it will be, because that word's in the Bible. And then you'll see uh, from two skips, four skips, you know, eight, 25, all the way up to half a million, if it's there. And this one is at 72,000 plus, 224. Armageddon is a very great slaughter. The appointed time of fire. That's the last day when Jesus comes back, and it's more brutal than all the seven years put together. He, Jehovah, killed Obama, God. And when God talks prophecy, he always talks in past tense. Because what he tells us in the Bible has already happened because he knows the end from the beginning. And will you just please believe that and quit doubting? Please believe. He, Jehovah, killed Obama, Gog, as his target. My words are like fire, the Holocaust. Now, what they call the Holocaust in World War II ain't nothing like this is going to be. This is the Holocaust. The great Holocaust of blood, the day of the Lord, from the time of God, thus the mystery will be fulfilled. It ain't going to be no mystery no more. Now, praise God, it ain't to you and me. This ain't no mystery. This is not a mystery. He's already told us. We believe. We have the Bible code. We have God speaking to us. The end of days detail, so we the church, we the bride, we the believers, would know what's coming. And we can proclaim it and share it. So when these people miss the rapture, it might come across their desk. And they can see what we knew and believe then. Okay, that's what we want. That's why we do this. And let's read that again. God's word in his dialect. Armageddon is a very great slaughter. The appointed time of fire. Jehovah killed Obama as his target. My words are like fire. The Holocaust. You're going to say be destroyed. and That's your Holocaust, folks. You might want to fall in love with his word. Because every word in the plain text is as powerful as this last word that he gives. It says be, be destroyed to Barack Obama and the Pope and everybody there. All the armies, dude. We're talking Nephilim. We're talking giants. We're talking space aliens. All these people, we, we know those are demons. But they're all going to be there with the humans and God's going to kill them all. With, you know, be destroyed. Learn to love his word. Fear his word. My words are like fire. The Holocaust. The great Holocaust of blood. The day of the Lord. From the time of God. Thus the mystery will be fulfilled. Boom. And he's got those wonderful verses there. Revelation 16. And they gather them together in one place. It's called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. That's the Gog Magog War too, folks. United Nations War. God kills them. Gets them all in one place just so he can say, hey, be destroyed. And they'll all die. Slaughter of blood. A river of blood. Up to the horse's bridle for 200 miles, man. And the wine press was trodden without the city, and the blood came out of the wine press even up to the horse's bridle by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. 
200 miles. Daniel 7.11, I beheld then because the voice of the great words from which the horn spake. So we got Barack Obama talking big, boastful words, and then Jesus comes back and says, be destroyed. And his words kind of override this idiot. And the horn spake, and he said, I beheld and even the beast was slain when Jesus spoke. And his body was destroyed, given to the burning flame. Hey guys, why don't you remember what we said? The horn is being the, is a powerful one. Why don't you give your heart, your spirit, your belief over to the great horn, Jesus Christ, the greatest power of powers. And he's going to take out this little horn and the whole armies of the world with his word. Love his word, believe his word, share his word. We encourage you. I will, by God's grace, right after this Bible study, I will put these tables together that we've discussed tonight and make them shareable and get them out there. And we encourage you to share them with everybody. Uh, Evelyn says, waiting for the rapture. Was he bred? We answered that. We could be very possible that Barack Obama was created. Uh, amen. Jehovah is amazing. He sure is, Heather. I love you guys. Let's pray. Lord, you are amazing. We, we love your goodness to us. Thank you for being so good to us and kind. And thank you for revealing your heart to us here at the end of days so we'd know, so we'd have, have it all right, have the story put together. And we praise you for that. And just, I mean, the fact that you included us and everybody here who's, who's able to lay eyes on this and hear your word, what a blessing. I pray that they'll take advantage of that and fear your word and be so thankful in their hearts for what they have seen and heard tonight and all these Bible studies, what you've given to us. I pray for Sean. Keep giving him wisdom. Help us to uh, know what we need to know in the days ahead. I know you will. That's your desire. That's why you did this for us. And just direct Sean's heart and his eyes and his uh, hands and all that you're leading him to do. And we praise you. We give you praise for this. And I pray for everybody here that we'll be blessed as we have faith, operate our faith that you've given us in belief. And help us to believe everything you want us to know. And I just thank you for that blessing and the opportunity to do that. And I pray that everybody will do that. By your grace and your glory, we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, I love you. We'll see you next time around. Brother George says, amen. I say amen. Love you guys. Uh, 726, that is Central Standard Time, tomorrow night by God's grace. Jonathan says, amen. Come Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Evelyn, hallelujah. Amen. Gordy, amen. In Jesus' holy name, amen, says Heather. There's Cush. God bless Brother JB, Sean, and everyone watching and supporting this ministry. Amen. Thank you, bro. Amen with love, says Adrian. Amen, guys. Love you. By God's grace, tomorrow, 726.